Hey everybody, and welcome to this lesson on indicators. For this video, we'll look at what indicators are and what indicators are used for. Then we'll get into a bit of the chemistry behind indicators, which will help us to understand how they actually work. Let's get going. Analyzing the word indicator can help us understand what an indicator is. To indicate is to show or point out something. This can help us to remember that indicators are substances that we add to solutions that show or point out their pH. Remember, the pH of a solution is a measure of how acidic or basic it is, depending on the concentration of hydrogen ions. Indicators can actually help us to understand the concentration of hydrogen ions within a solution through a colour change. This is because almost all indicators have two main colours which they can turn. For example, the indicator bromothymol blue can be yellow or blue depending on the pH of the solution it's added to. Below a pH of 6, bromothymol blue turns yellow, but above a pH of 7.6, bromothymol blue is blue. So depending on this colour we see, we can get information about the pH of a solution. There are many different indicators, and different indicators change colours at different pHs. So we use these different indicators in various situations, depending on the unique colour change ranges of each indicator. Although there are many different types of indicators, there are two broad categories of indicators. There are indicators that are man-made, which we call synthetic indicators, and there are also indicators that come from nature, which are natural indicators. Bromothymol blue is an example of a synthetic indicator that humans have made. On the other hand, litmus is an example of a natural indicator. It's a purple dye obtained from lichen. You may have heard red and blue litmus paper, but there's also a liquid form of litmus indicator that can be added to solutions as an indicator. Whilst litmus and other natural indicators are great, we still make and design synthetic indicators because often synthetic indicators can give us clearer colour changes when we're performing practicals. Synthetic indicators also tend to be cheaper and more easily sourced. Now that we've learnt what indicators are, it's time to discuss how indicators actually work. Most indicators are actually weak acids or bases themselves, meaning they exist in an equilibrium. This chemical equilibrium can be written as HN reacting to form hydrogen ion and indicator ion. In here in this equilibrium stands for indicator. Since indicator molecules can be quite complicated, we can summarise them to be in in this general equilibrium. So, H in is the acidic form of the indicator, whilst this in is the basic form of the indicator. Importantly, the acidic form and basic form of the indicator are different colours. Let's say, for example, that the acidic form H in is green for this specific indicator, and the basic form is yellow. We can explain how all indicators work through Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle states that when a system at dynamic equilibrium is disturbed by changes to its conditions, the equilibrium will shift to counteract and minimise that change or disturbance. Let's now imagine that we have a solution and add some of this yellow-green indicator to it. Let's look at what would happen if this solution was quite acidic. Initially, there's going to be an increase in the concentration of hydrogen ions from the acidic solution, which disturbs the equilibrium of the indicator. According to Le Chatelier's principle, the equilibrium will shift towards the left to reduce the added concentration of hydrogen ions and minimise the disturbance. This leads to an increase in the concentration of the green H in molecules, making the solution turn green. But what about if we then added a base to this solution? Well, adding a base would disturb the equilibrium by initially decreasing the concentration of hydrogen ions, because the hydroxide ions from the base would react with the hydrogen ions to form water. According to Le Chatelier's principle, the equilibrium will shift to the right to replace the lost concentration of hydrogen ions, and over time, the concentration of hydrogen ions and yellow in molecules increase, and the solution turns yellow. As a quick note, the colour of the solution impacts how we interpret indicators. Indicators work well when we add them to clear and colourless solutions because we can easily see the colour. But not all solutions are like this. If we're analysing an acidic yellow solution and use an indicator that is red in acidic conditions, we'll instead see an orange colour. So it's important to consider which indicator to use for different solutions. But, as you can see, indicators can show us changes in pH through a colour change because indicators exist in an equilibrium. And that's it for this video. 
We've looked at indicators, which are substances that show the pH of solutions through a colour change. This is because most indicators are weak acids or bases, and they exist in a dynamic equilibrium. Depending on whether an acid or base is added, the equilibrium will shift to counteract these changes. Importantly, indicators can exist in two forms, which are different colours, allowing them to change colour. From this colour change, we can then observe the acidity or basicity of a substance. See you next time.